What's up? What's up, man? God bless you, man. May the Lord continue to restore you, um, uplift you, surround you with his blessings as you hold on to the powerful and mighty word of God. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you how to beat the odds. You know, in a world full of uncertainties, in a world full of um, hatred, um, just full of so many difficulties, how does one beat the odds? Um, I'm going to share my story and how I beat the odds, and hopefully this can help somebody out there. Have you ever seen a, 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 an artist, all right, who is really, really good at his craft, amen? Um, or maybe even a basketball player. I mean, somebody that is really, really good. I don't know if you noticed that a lot of these people who are really good at what they do spend an enormous amount of time practicing. Yeah, practicing. Um, a lot of the people don't get this, but you're not going to get good at anything if you don't practice. If you're not a practicing um, believer, if you're just a believer, because there's a difference between just being a believer and being a practicing believer. Um, a believer is one who is like, I'm going to just give you a perfect parallel. You know, the Bible said that demons believe and tremble. Yeah, they believe and tremble, but... You got to do better than what they're doing. Amen. You got to be a practicing believer. The reason why demons believe and tremble is because number one, they know who, they're, who they are dealing with. They know that this is the Lord of hosts, the, the one and the only king of the universe, the one who, to whom they will have to give an account. But not just them. We also must give an account unto him. But what is the difference between a demon that believes in a person who may be going to church, um, you know, holds a Bible, you know, got the Bible app. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and it's going, trekking through their, their, their um, path, amen, through the path of righteousness following the Lord. The practicing believer is the one that you want to be. The one that practices the word of God, the one that puts the word of God into practice. Does that mean that you are not going to fail and falter from time to time? No. Nah. But the Bible does tell us should we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Now, I'm sharing this with you in order to, to let you know how I personally be Dodds. Let's go back to the example of the basketball player, right? Let's just imagine that this is the best basketball player in the world and they ask him that famous question, how did you get to be so good? You know, they usually say these words, I practice harder than anybody. Every time somebody else was out there um, just, you know, just kicking back and enjoying their vacation, I was practicing. While somebody was um, out, um, you know, doing groceries, man, I was, I was starving, but I was practicing. You know, I kept on practicing and practicing until my fingers bled. I practiced until my knees gave out. I practiced and I practiced. In the same way I'm going to um, present to you, the same thing I'm presenting it to you, but from a biblical standpoint. If you are going to be successful as a Christian man, amen, and as a Christian woman, you're going to have to learn to, first of all, submit to God. And be a practicing believer. You do not want to be the kind of person that just is a believer. Because there's a lot of people who believe. I mean, even atheists believe. They say that they don't believe, but they're discounting a God whom they say that they don't believe. If they didn't believe in him, they wouldn't even have to worry about him, right? But let's go ahead and keep our focus on the real deal here. The focus is that how does one overcome all of these obstacles and beat the odds? The way that I beat the odds was by consuming and remaining in God's word. The way that I beat the odds is by remaining focused on his ability to, to give me the, the power, amen, and the grace to overcome every obstacle. Yes, there were times where I was just wanting to give up. Do I struggle with those times nowadays? No, man. I don't even struggle with that. Do you know why? It's because I am completely and fully anchored. And that doesn't mean that tomorrow I might not have a, a tough day. Amen. But that part about struggling? No, nah, man. I know where my faith lies in. I'm a practicing believer. I choose to walk this walk. I know that it is going to be a difficult walk. 
I still choose to walk this walk. I know that in this world I will have trouble, but I still choose to walk this walk. I know that in this world perilous times will come, but I still choose to walk this walk. The Bible tells me very clearly that through many tribulations, I will have to enter into the kingdom of God. And I still choose to walk this walk. Let me tell you something that the path of life, amen, the path of life, it is a path that is narrow and difficult and very few that find it. Have you ever walked uphill and had a pleasant experience? I have. When you have somebody walking with you and you really get along with that person, even walking uphill can be a pleasant experience. Now, I'm going to go ahead and share something with you because I don't, I'm not quite sure if a lot of people get this walking with God thing. You know, you can walk with God and, 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 and be missing a leg. You can walk with God and be in a wheelchair. You can walk with God. Walking with God is a person that stays submitted regardless of whatever it is that he is going through in his life. A person who, who chooses by his own free will that he is not going to turn his back on the God whom he loves. It's about falling in love with God. That no matter what's going to happen in your life, no matter what ends up happening in your life, if your mama leaves you, if your wife decides she wants to fly the coop, amen? If your children want to disrespect you, if you're feeling like you're the only one in the church, amen, who really loves God, you're still going to uh, um, focus your, uh, uh, your full attention on him and not on everybody else around you who is tripping out, jumping off the cuckoo's nest and doing who knows what else, right? How to overcome, how to beat the odds, is by practicing his word harder than anybody else. It's by getting into God's word deeper than anybody else would, would normally do. It's by spending the more time as possible as you can in his word. It's about trusting him fully. Even if it kills you, you're still going to trust him. Even all the way till you feel like, man, there is no way that this can happen. But you know what, Lord? It, let your will be done. It's to surrender to his will, whether it's a favorable um moment for you or not if it's not favorable you're still going to choose to surrender to his will if it ends up messed up you're going to trust that god is able to take that which is messed up and turn it around for your life you want to be the kind of person that puts this book into practice this is how you overcome the odds how am i sober for almost seven years now I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I went to so many thousands of thousands of hours of AA and NA and whatever A they might have out there. Mm -mm -mm. I didn't go to no 12 step programs. I didn't do this by myself. I did this with the grace and the help of God that I relapsed not even once. It's because I chose to, to put this word amen, into practice for my own personal life. Not for somebody else's. I didn't, I didn't get sober for somebody else. I got sober, amen, because I chose that I was, by, by my own free will, I chose to go ahead and surrender. To surrender. And unless you're fully surrendered, regardless how things are going to turn out, you're going to constantly be disappointed. This life is going to bring you disappointments. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> this life is going to be full of disappointments. And no matter what you do, no matter. I mean, there were times when I ain't going to lie to you. And I was like, man, I even called past my pastor and I was Pastor Cheryl. Whoo, man, I'm doing everything that I know to do right. And nothing good is happening. You know, the Bible tells us to that we should continue. Do not grow weary while doing good. Don't grow weary. Why would the Bible tell us not to grow weary? Because when you're doing good, it's not the most easiest thing. Amen? Because we're easily um, led astray. We're easily being pulled in the opposite direction. We're easily um, being manipulated by our thoughts, our feelings. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. You know your feelings. Feelings, feelings, feelings. Oh, man, I don't even want to go ahead and touch on that subject, but I'm going to leave that alone because sometimes how we feel has to do a lot with how, with, with, with how we walk our faith. But the truth is this. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. So what am I trying to say? When you put some legs on your faith, 
when you when you go ahead and decide that this is what you want to do for the rest of your life, even if it kills you, even if they put you in a lion's den like they did Daniel, will you trust God then? Hmm? Are you going to trust God when nothing goes right for you that day? Are you going to trust God when you drop the ball? You know, the other day I dropped the ball and I, I messed up and didn't go to this to a certain meeting. And that was actually important. And um, man, I was like low key beat myself up a little bit. But then I got a hold of myself and I began to praise God. I began to praise him. I said, Lord, I know who you are. I know that you're full of grace. I know that there is no devil in hell that is able to, to remove the anointing that you have in my life. I know that there is no demon, <laughs> hallelujah, that is able right now to remove the favor that you have placed over my life. So why am I tripping, Lord? I said, I trust you. I, I trust you. Yes, I, I, I'm going to keep it 1,000. I dropped the ball. But Lord, I know you got my back. I know that you love me. I know that you will be there for me. I know that you are the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and there is none besides you. Amen. When you get a hold of this word and you begin to speak it and recite it, Instead of reciting what your problems are telling you to recite. You know what I'm talking about, right? You know exactly how it is. You begin to start reciting and begin to think about that thing again and again. To the point that it brings depression and anxiety. You don't have to go out like that. I'm telling you right now. Choose to be the kind of believer that is a practicing believer. Don't be that kind of believer that is kind of like... You know, some people out there that, you know what I'm saying? They just lip service, you know. They, they believe with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. That's what the Bible said. They worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Where is your heart at? Because wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Is your treasure on the things that you're trying to get from God or is it on God? Is it on the resources or is it on the source of everything? Hmm. This is how I overcame. I overcame because of the word of the testimony that I keep speaking. I keep speaking my testimony, man. I keep telling people what God has done for me. It keeps me accountable. Not only does it keep me accountable, but it also becomes a blessing unto others. The blood of Jesus Christ covers me. And I know for sure that there is nothing in this world, nothing at all, that is able to remove the favor that he has placed in my heart, my life. No one can take that away, guys. They can take my home. They can take my car. Man, you can take my doggone kids, my wife, my whatever you want to take, man. But one thing that you cannot take from me is the fact that I love the Lord. And that no matter what, I know he has my back. God bless you. Hopefully you are able to receive this. It's about being an overcomer. It's about being a practicing believer. It's about putting some feet on your faith. It's not about being led, led by your feelings, but by the faith that you haven't got. And, 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 if, and if this rubs you a little bit the wrong way, I, I just want to tell you that this, this is not meant for that. So this, this is not about... Um, Condemnation. This is about hopefully convicting, convicting you. Because if you are convicted, that means that the Holy Spirit of God is working inside of your heart, leading you towards a certain direction that God wants you to be. He wants to work in your life. He wants to bless you. But you, you're going to have to give him that one thing. Everybody already knows what it is, right? It's called everything. If you're not willing to give God everything, then maybe... Maybe we need to reconsider. Amen. Maybe we need to work this thing out again and come to God and say, Lord, what am I, what am I not giving you? And if you are giving him everything and you know that that's what you are doing and things are still going wrong. Just remember that in this life you will have trouble. But be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. And as long as you have him in you, you are also an overcomer. That is exactly how I did it. I did it by remaining in God's word. I did it by remaining faithful. That's how I did it. 
Hopefully this blesses your heart. I love you. And I pray right now that God will do great and mighty works in your life. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now for the people that are listening, that you will begin to just um, soothe their hearts and, and in those areas where they are still struggling and hurting and aching, Lord God, and they just keep tripping over their own um, feelings, Lord God. I pray right now, Heavenly Father, that you will pour a double anointing, Heavenly Father. Bless them double for all of their trouble. And in the powerful and mighty name of Jesus, let them be able to have peace in the middle of their storm. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Um, you know, that, that's, that secret is that simple. You can be an overcomer. Yes, you can. You can beat the odds. God bless you. Good night.